Throughout the building knowledge activities, you continually refer to the data the student should be keeping in their logs. By including this recorded information in your conversations with teams and in whole class discussions, you cultivate their awareness of the need to keep track of what they're doing. You are the student's aid as they work through the inquiry-based activities which allow for the development of understandings of technology, science, and math concepts, and principles of consumer research. Students gain knowledge through direct experience with materials and team members. They're no longer passive receptors of information and facts, but active creators of their own understanding. Once the teams have completed the building knowledge phase by compiling all of their materials testing, performance research, and consumer data, they're ready to write a design brief based on the requirements spelled out in the RFP. During the third step in the experience, the design phase, you shadow and mentor students as they develop sketches and work to synthesize information that supports their proposed solutions. After finishing their design briefs, the build and test phase begins. At this stage in the process, students build prototype working models and test performance to make sure that all of their design criteria are met. Your questions grease the wheels for students to be able to connect the prior knowledge they have built to modifications made in each new design. Students use their design log sketches to guide the selection of materials as they work through the performance testing of their prototypes. Your guidance is important if your students are going to move beyond random guessing and checking as their process for testing and modifying models to a process of test, reflect, modify and test again. After the initial performance testing is completed through the many trials run while building and testing various designs, students are ready to finalize their models. The last performance tests are conducted as students complete the construction of their final prototypes. Based on the results of these tests, if the vehicle failed to meet the design specifications spelled out in their design briefs, they modify the mechanical components and retest the vehicle. You'll find that you need to continue to encourage them to work through the process of modifying their prototypes based on prior results and recorded evidence. We call them revisions, revision A, revision B, revision C. You just keep going over and over again until you get it right, to get it correct, until the customer is satisfied. Your team of teachers will work together as students bring closure to their engineering design experience. The students will need advice as they prepare speeches, visuals, and the final vehicle. Just as with vehicle manufacturing in the real world, there's a great deal of anticipation as the teams work to see that all of the mechanical components are working properly, that the body is placed on the chassis, and that the vehicle is ready for its final presentation to the customer. Through questions and comments, all members of the teacher team lend a hand as the student teams develop presentations that require them to look back at their learning experience and capture all that they've accomplished. This graph shows that most people would spend over $50 for a motorized toy car. As you can see from my graphs, our consumer likes the color red for the outside of our car. I think that's basically it, and um, I think parents would like it also because it's educational, and it does not cost too much. This metacognitive activity where the students revisit their learning process helps them remember both concepts and the engineering design experience in more detail. A World in Motion 2 is an experience where all students can succeed. One thing I think was really good was it got a lot of girls involved, and as far as I know, there aren't many other programs like this where girls will... Um, become acquainted with the program. So it is kind of nice to see the girls get in there and dig in and learn how the gears work. And um, at this school in particular, it was a team of three girls that actually won the contest at, at the school. So that was kind of nice to see. Challenge 3 utilizes the same engineering design process as the motorized toy challenge. The student teams are first required to set goals based on specifications given to them for developing a book of designs for the construction of toy gliders. Um, you already received uh, your briefing. Uh, what I want you to do right now is kind of look over that letter 
and see if there's any questions that you might have about the different processes that they're expecting out of you because we're going to fill out a form here in a minute that uh, deals with that to help you get a better focus on what we need to do and what you need to present. They have so many questions about what they're going to do and, and in a way this just is a good goal setting opportunity for them that they can see the steps, they understand a little bit more about the process and, and how we're going to have to accomplish those goals. In order to successfully complete the flight design challenge, students must also understand the connection between the goal and the many interrelated steps in the process. Here they learn how companies target consumers of their products. I've got um, my Sports Illustrated magazine I brought with me this morning and we've got a picture of what, Michael Gibson? It's a Chrysler. A Chrysler? What kind of Chrysler? Limited convertible. Okay, it's a convertible. So who do you think Chrysler is targeting to buy this convertible? Who can raise their hand and tell me what they think? John. Okay, maybe a single person. Anyway, what we're, what we're going to look at now is that you have a report, Alex and Deborah. It's called America's Young Consumer. And this is a consumer report of the age group that you're dealing with on your glider. Okay, remember we're going to be looking at some elementary students and lower junior high students. And we want to see what they think and how they use their money and what they buy. So I want y'all to go ahead and read and I want y'all to look and notice some factors about the buying habits of people at this age group. Along with your colleagues and the volunteers, you facilitate the students' fabrication of new understandings as they work through exploratory activities related to concepts such as forces, center of gravity, aerodynamics, collecting and interpreting data, and how to use knowledge for specific applications. The building knowledge phase of the engineering design experience continues when students are asked to draw a glider that they think will appeal to their target consumers. I want you to come up with a design that you think that they would enjoy building. So on a scrap sheet of paper, on a scrap sheet of paper, I want you individually to design one. It can be long, it can be short, it can have big wings, short wings, shaped wings. It doesn't matter however you would like it to be. You design your plane, and then after you all get it taken care of as individuals, then you come together as a group and you design on, decide on the model you like. When the teams have agreed on their individual designs, they then have the task of translating them into three-dimensional models. As students build, test, and adjust their models, they learn about the basics of flight and the laws of aerodynamics. Just as importantly, they learn the value of working together as a team. To build anything is a social phenomenon. It takes more than one person to do that. Uh, when you're going to produce more than one product or, or, or try to combine different people's insights together. So I, I think the real strength of the program is they begin to realize that in, even in a work environment that they'll be doing in several years, uh, that they really have to deal with the social issues as well as the science and the mathematics and, and, and things of that nature.